David here with Vig Boot on pens, back again with another fountain pen review. One of my favorite things about the fountain pen hobby is discovering something new. Whether it be a new company or a new model, something I previously wasn't aware of. Today I'm going to show you something which was a new discovery for me, and maybe it'll be for you as well. I have a pen from a company by the name of Big Idea Design, and the pen I'll be showing you today is called their TI Ultra, which has a versatile modular system which can be used as either a fountain pen, a rollerball, or a ballpoint pen. Uh, it's rather unique. Uh, what I'm going to do today is talk a little bit about the company and how I came across them. I'm going to go over the parts and features of the TI Ultra, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about the pen. I'll show some measurements size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Big Idea Design for providing this pen for review. A Big Idea Design is a company based out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. The company got its start back in 2011 and has launched 30 different projects via Kickstarter, mainly for a variety of everyday carry items, uh, everything from pocket tools and knives to a number of different ballpoint and rollerball pens. But what I'm going to show you today is their first fountain pen, which was launched in a Kickstarter campaign in 2019. I learned of the company after doing a little detective work surrounding a different fountain pen. Uh, there is a popular YouTuber slash photographer slash vlogger by the name of Peter McKinnon. Uh, besides his successful channel, he also sells drops of limited edition items on his Pete's Pirate Life site. Most of the items are pirate themed, like gold coins and things like that. But recently, he offered a fountain pen for sale. Uh, it was rather expensive. Uh, it was priced at $1,000, but the 100 available units sold out in less than a day. Um, I was curious about who had made this pen, so I looked into some of the other items that he had offered in the past and saw that some were made by Big Idea Design. And I could tell the pirate fountain pen he offered was made by the same company as well. I reached out to the company, and like I said, they were kind enough to send out this pen for me to review. Okay, that was a lot of backstory, but let's actually take a look at this pen. The pen arrives in this box, and it comes with a lot of stuff in here. Uh, it arrived with a couple of stickers. I like this uh, tiger sticker with the uh, pen in its mouth here. And then it arrived with some spare O-rings. Uh, and then there is a pen sleeve, which feels like it's made for some rubbery felt. And then we have the pen. Now, there's a couple of things in here. The pen arrives with two nib units, uh, one titanium and the other steel. The spare nib unit is in the small container on the top, and then the larger container on the bottom has the section used when you convert this pen to a rollerball or a ballpoint, as well as the 0.38 millimeter black Uniball Signo refill. And then in the middle is the actual pen. Okay. Let's go over the parts and features of this pen, and then I'll get into the modular aspect of it. The pen is machined from grade five titanium alloy, which is known for its outstanding strength, lightweight, and is resistant to both scratching and corrosion. It's available in two different finishes. There is the stone washed, which is what I have here, and there is what, another one called the machined raw, which is a bit lighter in color. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. It is flat. Uh, close to the end of the cap, we have the clip. It is rather wide with a bent up tip. It reminds me a bit of the uh, clips on the tactile turn pens, uh, but the bend on those go up rather than down and up as it does on this pen. The top of the clip is laser engraved with TI, which is the chemical symbol for titanium. While this clip is a bit on the stiff side, I do find it functional with thinner or thicker fabrics. There is no traditional cap band, and the transition from the cap to the barrel is very smooth. The barrel then tapers down at a fairly even angle until at the end there is a thin squared groove and the end of the barrel is flat. The cap twists off with a single rotation. Uh, there is actually an O-ring located at the back of the section which helps secure this cap when closed. Um, we have a metal on metal threads here which operate well, but once the cap is removed you are presented with this number six Bach nib. Now this pen comes with two nib units, both Bach. One is titanium and the other stainless steel, and both are fine. Uh, this is the titanium one, uh, and here's a look at the stainless steel. 
Uh, and then here's a look at the plastic feed. Now, in regard to the titanium nib I received, it was significantly out of alignment. You can see here in the picture, the left tine is fine, but the one on the right here has a bit of a wave to it, going lower and then slightly higher than its counterpart. While from time to time I've found the need to make slight adjustments to a nib right out of the box to suit my tastes, and if the tip of a nib is slightly out of alignment, then those are simple fixes, but I can't recall receiving a nib so far out of whack before. And fixing this nib would be a bit more involved. If I had purchased this pen, I would have contacted their customer support and requested a replacement titanium nib. While titanium nibs traditionally provide a bit firmer writing experience, it would have been nice to have the two different nibs be different sizes, like maybe one fine and one broad, or a fine and a stub, so that you could change out the nibs when you feel the need for that particular size. Um, I have a feeling that most users will determine which of the two nibs they prefer and just stick with that one. Uh, there isn't much motivation to switch back from one to the other. The section is titanium as well, and begins with the cap threads. The section angles up only slightly, half a millimeter from beginning to end, and contains a number of squared grooves. When I first looked at this section, I thought that having the threads at the end would be a bit uncomfortable. On other pens, that design choice has not been a favorite of mine. But with the inclusion of the grooves on the section, you really don't feel a difference between the threads and the remainder of the section. Uh, they do really help provide a secure grip. Uh, when you are holding this pen, your grip is not going anywhere. And at the end of the section is the aforementioned O-ring and a medium-sized step up to the remainder of the barrel. I found the threads at the end of the section to be a bit problematic when inking this pen. Uh, ink has a tendency to get into the threads and won't come out with a dry tissue. Uh, you need a moist tissue or something wet in order to properly remove the ink, which is a bit of an annoyance. Even though this pen is metal, I find it to be a decent weight, not as light as aluminum and not as heavy as steel or brass. The pen is long enough to use unposted. The cap does post. There's an O-ring in the top of the cap which interacts with the groove at the end of the barrel. Um, it does a good job of securing the cap. Um, I do find that the cap posts deep enough that it doesn't throw off the balance of the pen or back weight it. Um, I'm always apprehensive of posting metal caps on metal barrels. I'm concerned that the barrel will sustain scratching over time, where the cap rubs against it. So, so far so good with this pen, however. I haven't noticed any scratching at all. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, the distinguishing feature of this pen is the versatile modular aspect. How you could switch out between steel and titanium nibs, as well as virtually uh, any ballpoint or rollerball refill with this pen. The company lists almost 900 different refills which will work with this pen. The mechanism that is used in order to accomplish this I think is rather ingenious. Now, I will admit I'm not as well versed in the world of ballpoints, rollerballs, and gel pens, but it's a mechanism I personally haven't seen before, and I'll show you how it works during the writing sample. It's efficient and simple to use. The Big Idea Design TI Ultra Pen is available from the company's website. I've also seen it at a couple of online retailers. It sells for $240. I have a couple of pens I can convert between Rollerball and Fountain, and I find that I tend to use them in only one of the forms. I personally don't find myself switching back and forth. But you might be a user who does switch back and forth. So when I look at the valuation for this pen, uh, I will typically think of it in relation to if I feel it's a good value for either a Fountain Pen or a Rollerball. And in this case for the Fountain Pen itself, with the two nibs provided, I feel for the build quality and the material used in this pen that the price is not out of line. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons. I'll show you more about how the interchangeable system works and provide a writing sample. Okay, to begin with, let's take a look at the package again and what you receive in here and kind of go over a little bit of what is inside. 
So here you have the additional nib unit. Uh, the titanium nib is in there right now. And then we have the pen. And then we have the unit that is used for the roller ball or the ball point. Uh, and let me go ahead and take this out of here and kind of show you a little bit of how this works. You can see here that the end of the refill that you're using kind of fits through the end of this section. And the, I would liken the mechanism that's used here to be almost like a chuck in a drill bit. You, there is a forward portion and a backward portion uh, and that you can see that it tightens. Here, let me get this out of here and you can see how it tightens right here. And so what happens is basically you could use just about any refill you want and it is only gripping on the end part here. Uh, and that way they can pretty much make this universal and just about anything can fit in here. So it's a, a, an interesting uh, concept and I think that it's executed well. Now let's go ahead and take the fountain pen unit out and you can go ahead and see how that fits in here. And this is what it looks like with that unit in there. Now, when you're not using the fountain pen unit, you could put it back in this tube, but it's a little bit problematic um, because you can't insert it this direction uh, because while there is some padding here in the bottom, the nib, if it is inked, well, then uh, the ink will get sucked down into that uh, into that uh, piece of foam. And they do say store in this direction. Well, actually, let me hold it this way. So they do give you a direction to store it. But the problem is in that particular case, when you do store it in this direction, when you put the lid on, then it is pushing down on this foam and the tip of the nib is actually being pressed down by this little plastic. And I don't know if over time, I know we got a little bit of reflection there. Um, if over time that might cause an issue with the tipping of the nib, I just don't like the fact that the main pressure being put on this nib right now is right on the tip. So I'm not quite sure what else they could have done there, but um, I'm just not necessarily comfortable leaving it in here, uh, maybe with it completely closed. If you not don't close it completely, then there's a tiny bit of space in there, but completely closed. I just don't like the fact that it's pushing up against the uh, the very tip of the nib and can potentially uh, alter that or uh, or tweak it a bit. I will say that when you are taking off the uh, rollerball section, uh, that you need to be careful because the um, the seam of the section is right here in the middle. So if you're taking the section off and you're holding it right here, then you're just unscrewing the chuck. You need to hold it here in the back in order to actually remove the section. And then let's go ahead and put the fountain pen section back on here. In regard to some size comparisons, uh, here it is with a tactile turn gist. Uh, and then here it is with a Montegrappa Elmo in the Chrysia Cola. And here it is with a Sailor Pro Gear. And then in regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Diplomat Arrow and a Franklin Kristoff Model 66. And finally, a pen that I think is a little bit underrated, which is the Cross Peerless 125. Uh, and this is the Darth Vader model. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, here it is with the Sailor Pro Gear. And then here it is with the Diplomat Arrow. And then finally, here it is with the tactile turn gist. And this has the Damascus uh, section on it. And I just love that. I just think that's one of the coolest sections in my collection. And that's what it looks like in comparison to the TI Ultra. So here we go with the writing sample for the big idea design. You also might see them as just big eye design. And this is the TI Ultra. Uh, this is the fine stainless steel nib. And the ink that we're using today is Monteverde. Strawberry Shortcake.
This is what the ink looks like. This is one of my favorite inks out of their Sweet Life series. Um, it's a nice, vibrant, uh, kind of very vibrant red, uh, kind of an orange red. This is what it looks like next to the Stilo and Stile Roman Centurion red, which is more of kind of a rose red. Uh, and then here is Diamine Firestorm red, which is a nice red with some shimmer in it as well. This is what the bottle looks like. As I mentioned, this is part of their Sweet Life series, which uh, has a number of really cool inks that I would recommend checking out. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a fine nib. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of here. Uh, I feel it does have a fair amount of feedback to it. Uh, in regard to ink flow, it's a bit on the light side. In regard to reverse writing, It's scratchy, but it does lay down an extra, extra fine line. Um, as I mentioned, I kind of wish that they would, in the two different nib units, that they would have provided two different tipping sizes so that uh, you would interchange them more. But uh, like I mentioned, I, I think have a feeling that someone's going to basically pick which nib they want and stick with that nib. There isn't as much reason to switch between the titanium fine and the uh, uh, and the stainless steel fine as much. But in regard to some fast writing. This feed keeps up just fine. So here we have the Big Idea Design TI Ultra. Um, I think it's an interesting pen. I think it, the interchangeability is an interesting concept and it's done well. Uh, and that overall, even if you're just using it for a fountain pen or just a rollerball or a ballpoint, uh, that I think that it's a decent value for the money. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.